Hello programmers! This presentation discusses how to make a program input an integer and keep trying if a negative number or non-integers are entered. Develop a program that inputs an integer, doubles it, and displays the result. Negative values and data type mismatches are to be rejected. A type mismatch occurs if anything except an integer is entered. Use a do while loop to keep asking for an input until a positive integer is entered. Here is a sample program execution. The prompt says, enter a positive integer. On my first try, I enter a negative 5. The program responds with, value must be positive, try again. Then I try entering a 3.6, and the program responds with, only integers are accepted, try again. This time I'll see if I can really fake it out. I am entering the letters A, S, D, F. The program responds again with, only integers are accepted, try again. I am being rejected by this program. It must not like me. How rude. It had better accept the number 42. Yeah, it worked and responded with, the value 42 doubled is 84. I could make a fortune selling this program as the latest app. I could advertise it as, see what would happen if you doubled your income. Let's start off with a simple program that only inputs an integer, doubles it, and displays the result. I named the program Java Input Loop. The package name is Java Input Loop and does not use any capital letters. The import java.util.scanner line gives the program the ability to read from the keyboard. The class name is Java Input Loop and the program will be in a file named Java Input Loop Java. Here is the start of the executable code defined by public static void main open parentheses string open close square brackets args close parentheses curly brace. Create the scanner object. I named it stdin. Declare two variables, num1 and sum. Num1 will be used to hold the integer read from the keyboard. Sum will hold the value from num1 multiplied by 2. A system.out.printf command displays the prompt message. Num1 equals stdin.nextint open close parentheses semicolon is used to read an integer from the keyboard. Once we have an input for num1, it is doubled and assigned to the variable named sum. Another system.out.printup statement displays the original value and the value that has been doubled. I can check for negative numbers right after doing the input from the keyboard. I'm using an if-else construct. The if tests for a negative input. When the comparison expression in the if statement, num1 less than 0, is true, the message, value must be positive, try again, is displayed. Only when the if condition is false, the block of code attached to the else is executed. Then the sum is computed to be num1 times 2, and both numbers are displayed. Java implements an object-oriented programming technique called exception handling. It does this with the try, throw, catch blocks of code. Sections of code that can cause an error are placed in a try block. When an error is detected, a throw operation is used to jump out of the middle of the try block directly to the catch block. Some operations have an automatic throw built in, such as the scanner's detection of a data type mismatch. Other times, the programmer is responsible for doing the throw from inside the try block. In this example, the scanner's keyboard input and processing for negative input values are placed inside the try block. If the user would type in a floating point number, or even letters T, E, N instead of an integer, the scanner would detect an input mismatch exception and immediately jump to the catch block without even testing for a negative value. The catch statement identifies the type of exception it is willing to handle. Additional information about the exception is provided in a character string that can be used within the catch block. It is common to give the string the name E or EX. 
I'm not using that extra information in this program. The first line in the catch block is stdin.nextline, open close parentheses, semicolon. This is why the line is needed. The scanner was previously attempting to read an integer, but when it finds something that is not an integer, it stops removing characters from the keyboard's input buffer. If the user typed in the characters T E N, they would still be in the keyboard's input buffer. So far, the program does not have a loop to keep reading data from the scanner. But when the program is updated to use the loop, the non-integer data would still be left in the buffer just in case a different call to scanner would try to process it. Unfortunately, this program will be looping back again to try and read an integer, but the bad data is still in the buffer. The program would be left in an infinite loop with the scanner looping to try to read an integer with the non-integer data still in the input buffer. The solution is to use stdin.nextline open close parentheses to read the rest of the input buffer to clear it. Since there is not an assignment statement for the stdin.nextline, the remaining data from the input buffer is discarded. Now we don't need to worry about trying to process leftover and unwanted keyboard data. The next line in the catch box displays only integers are accepted. Try again. The program needs additional code to process the input mismatch exception. This code is brought into the program by the import java.util.inputMismatchException semicolon at the top of the program. Java has several ways of implementing loops. Code inside a loop is executed repeatedly until some condition occurs that ends the loop. When the loop ends, the line of code after the loop is executed next. One of the most important things that needs to be done is to make sure that there is a condition that will cause the loop to end. Otherwise, the program can get caught in an infinite loop and continue to loop until someone kills the program. Here is the do while loop. Notice that there is a conditional expression that belongs to the while statement. Since the while statement is at the bottom of the loop, the block of code for the do while loop is guaranteed to execute at least one time. In this code fragment, the integer x is declared and initialized to a zero. The block of code in the do while loop starts by displaying x equal zero. Then x is incremented to a one. A test is made in the while statement. Since one is less than five, the program jumps back to the top of the loop. The program now displays x equals one and increments x to a two. The code continues to loop until finally x equals 4 is displayed and x is incremented to a 5. Since x is no longer less than 5, the conditional expression that belongs to the while statement evaluates to false and the loop is ended. The printf statement after the loop is executed and it displays done. I want the program to display an error message and ask for the input again as long as the user is typing in negative numbers or non-integer values. I am going to do this by using a do while loop. Inside the body of the do while loop, I am going to place all of the code that does the console input, test for invalid values, and associated error messages. I will make the program continue to loop until good data is entered. Here is the full implementation of the check for negative numbers, non-integer values, and a loop. The do while loop has the blocks of code for the try and catch to keep inputting data from the keyboard until a good value has been entered. One thing is a little different from the previous version is that the computation of the sum and its display are now outside the loop instead of being part of an else block that was executed when a non-negative value was received. Now the do while is only being used for input. It is simpler to code by using a flag when there are two different cases that are being tested, negative values and non-integer values. 
I'm using a Boolean variable named keep trying as a flag to identify when to loop or not to loop. I could have chosen all sorts of other meaningful names such as try again, repeat until good data is entered. That didn't look good. Think of a flag on a mailbox. It is placed up to let the letter carrier know that there is mail to be picked up, otherwise it is set down. The program uses a prompt to request a positive integer. The first thing that happens in the try block is the flag is set to false. I am going to assume that there is no error unless one is detected. An attempt is made to read an integer. I see that the flag is set to true if a negative number is entered or if there is a type mismatch exception. The while statement tests the flag and loops back to the top of the loop if the flag is true because one of those conditions exists. The flag is set back to a false again at the top of the loop. Eventually, when the user enters good data, the flag remains false and the loop ends. The sum is computed as num1 times 2, the output message is displayed, and the program ends. This is the version of the code that is on the class Canvas website, and a link is placed in the comments section for the YouTube video. I hope you found this information very useful. You can modify the code to process other data types, such as double. The way it is currently written, you would need to duplicate a lot of code if you needed to input and validate many values. Instead of duplicating code over and over again, a function subroutine could be used to hold the code that loops until good data is received. Then you could just call the function with a single line of code each time a new input was needed. Maybe I'll show that in another presentation. See you around. Until then, bye.